Welcome to my Flosstube channel, Melly Ellie Stitches. My name is Melanie and this is my channel where I share all the projects I'm working on, plans. Sometimes I throw in some extra crafts, which I'm going to do at the end of this video. So let's get started. I have a lot to share. Um, first off, let's do the giveaway. I always love to do the giveaway first. So there were two giveaways. The first one was my Cross My Heart Notions bag. Um, the keyword for this was heart, and the winner is Katrina, the crafty cataloger. So I'm excited for you, Katrina. Um, send me your address and I'll get this in the mail. Katrina had mentioned that the theme of her wedding was hearts. So when I saw your name come up, I was, <laughs> I was really happy for you because I know you really were wanting this bag. The second giveaway was this adorable little cat cross stitch kit with the word love. And the winner for this is Amanda Bauer. So if both you ladies could just send me an email on Instagram or a message on Instagram or to my Gmail account below, I will get them in the mail to you next week. Now let's talk about the next giveaway. So I'm in the bunny mood. I am in the spring bunny mood, even though we got six inches of snow two days ago. <laughs> We had had like a 70 degree day in Michigan. There were children walking down the street in front of my house in shorts. It was glorious. And then like, I think three, four days later, we had six inches of snow. So anyway, I have been in the bunny mood and I found this adorable fabric. Um, and so I would like to give this project bag away to one of my subscribers. I love the idea of sewing this bag. I always sew the first one and then keep it for the giveaway because I think it's really cool when I'm sewing it to think about it going to one of you guys. So this is Hippity Hoppity. <laughs> First I'll show you the charm, which I have to say I found this charm on Etsy and I lost my mind because it's like a bouncing bunny just like the fabric. I thought that was so cute. And then I've got like a teal, a clear, a white, and a pink glass bead. I love how these two fabrics go together. I feel like this peach was like made for this with the coordinating flowers. And then unzip and you've got bunnies on the top and peach in the bottom. So I would love to give this away to one of you to kick off spring. Maybe you can store one of your spring projects in it. If you are interested in winning this bag, um, I'll be back in three weeks for my next video please put the word bunny in your comment and that'll be fun. I can't wait. So some quick life updates. It has been busy in this house. <laughs> um, let's see. So my, my niece Grace had her 15th birthday. I can hardly believe that she's 15. It's unbelievable. Um, I already mentioned the snow. So we've gone from extreme weather, like 70 degrees down to six inches of snow. And my poor peonies are just dazed and confused. I've got robins out in the front yard bopping around in the snow, which is just really weird to me. Um, but the craziness that happened. So I had to have surgery to remove a precancerous colon polyp. So here is my public service announcement. It is no fun to get a colonoscopy. It is miserable if you've done it, um, but worth it because typical screening for colonoscopy, colonoscopies, I think is 50 years old. They might've just lowered it to 45. And I just happened to get one because I was having some abdominal pain um, and they found this precancerous polyp. So please get your colonoscopies. So I had to have surgery to have that removed. Um, it was a tough one because it was like flat. So I've been real sore from that. Um, but then to top it off, in my infinite wisdom, I also scheduled my dog, Max, to have a cyst removed from his leg. Thought it would be easy breezy. The vet said, no big deal. You know, a couple of stitches. It better to get it off now. Don't wait. And the vet was booked. His first opening was the week of my surgery. So I was like, yeah, we'll just hang out on the couch together. Yeah, so the surgery went well for him. Um, he did only have five stitches. The poor thing... He's my sweet, like nervous boy, but the plastic cone, and I know you dog owners have dealt with the plastic cone, 
banging into everything, freaking out, won't eat, goes outside with six inches of snow and is just like a snow plow. <laughs> this was not, it was not good. And I was as worried about his mental health as I was his physical because he just seemed very dejected. So I went and got one of those inflatable donuts and he loved it. He went back to normal. He was eating. He was, you know, playing a little with my other dogs up and down the stairs. No big deal. And I thought this thing is the greatest. I have found a solution until a couple of nights ago, we came down in the morning, early in the morning, and he missed the last couple steps. Somehow he tripped on this donut and went end over end and ended up at the bottom of the stairs by the time I got to him and he was howling in pain. It broke my heart. It's the most horrible sound I've ever heard an animal make and I just was beside myself. Um, so I'll keep out the rest of the details. We ended up having to go to the ER, uh, the doggy ER. He got x-rays, he had to have a pain shot. They gave us medication to come home with. It was a nightmare. We got home at like two in the morning that day all that to be said, he's doing well. And um, yeah, so there's my other public service announcement. If you try an inflatable cone for your dog, be very, very careful with them on the stairs. He was like up and down like a champ. And for whatever reason, that morning, something caught. <sighs> so it's been a little stressful. <laughs> it's been a little stressful, but you know, I always try to step back and say, okay, Everything worked out. They got my polyp out. I'm fine. Max is fine. Things could have been so much worse. But yes, that is why I've been away for four weeks. I typically this year have been trying to make a point to come back every three, but I needed an extra week to heal. And so did Maxie. <laughs> so let's get into the stitching. So I want to go through my whips first. Um, if you're new to this channel, I had a plan in January that there were a couple pieces I wanted to continue to work on throughout the year to make progress. And that was my Mill Hill Santa kits. Uh, so I can build an ornament collection and a stocking, a dimension stocking that I'll show, which takes a lot of patience. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to work on those two throughout the year. And then in addition to that, I've really been trying to focus on 13 whips that I picked in my January video to say, okay, these 13, I'm going to stitch them one at a time until they're done. I can start new things. I can do other things, but I have to make them a focus. So it's really been working good for me. And I like the rotation that I'm doing so far. So I'm all about making the plans and the rotations. And so I'm going to keep rolling with it. So let's talk about them. Uh, the first one, like I mentioned, I purchased several of these. These are just so adorable. This is the Mill Hill Santa series. Um, I believe it started in 1999 and I think there's 72 total. Um, I started with Pine Tree Santa because of the bunnies. Um, and I've been having a lot of fun with this. I talked about it in my last video. I wasn't sure how I'd feel about the perforated paper, but I have to say, I really enjoyed that medium. It's it's easy to stitch on. I, I really enjoy it. So, this is where I got to, I made quite a bit of progress. I am almost completely done with the stitching. Isn't that adorable? So I got this tree done. This was the bulk of the stitching that I did this time. I had already had his coat. There were a few little stitches in here and there that I had to add, but I, I think it was only like to maybe here in my last video. So I got the rest of this tree done and you can see the little spaces where the beads are gonna have to go. And I started this bunny. Isn't that so cute? So I've got his legs and his boots and this other bunny to go. So I'm really hoping I can finish the stitching before the next video and then I can start beating this guy. I think he's just so adorable. And I've been watching some floss tube. Love to watch the floss tube. I was watching Lori from Mischievous Stitches and she had finished, um, it was a Halloween ornament of some kind. I don't know if it was a pumpkin. I can't remember exactly what the what the character was, but she showed a great way of how to finish your Mill Hill um, ornaments. So go check her channel out, Mischievous Stitches, 
and uh, check that tutorial out because I found it very helpful. I think that's how I'm going to try to finish this guy when I'm done. Okay, number two. So I have been working. That was the other thing in January. I wanted to do, so there was like four projects I wanted to have in my rotation. The, the Mill Hill Santa, the stocking, and then a whip that I'm working on and my monthly stitch along. So my monthly stitch along that I chose this year, actually the first one I've ever done, um, is the Lizzie Kate Flip It Stamps. These are so much fun. There's three buttons that they put in every design. They incorporate them into the design some adorable way. So for the month of March, it's like little gold coins. So much fun. So I'll show you the couple others that I finished so far. So I have January done. I stitched this one on 32 count uh, American Chestnut. Adorable. So the snowflakes were the buttons. And then I stitched February. I loved that one. The centers of the flowers were the buttons. And this was stitched on 32 count um, Cocoa Dust by number 12 Stitch Co. And then the one I just finished is March. And this one was stitched on 32 count Light Mocha. All two over two. Isn't he so cute? So I'm really enjoying these monthly stitch alongs. They go pretty fast because I typically start like right here towards the center. I'll stitch around this bottom border and then while I'm, after I put in the word, you know, the month, I can just mindlessly stitch while I'm watching TV um, and do fill in. So it goes really quickly once you have that bottom done. So I'm having a lot of fun with those. I'm excited to have the whole collection by the end of the year. And then I'm planning to put them on that stand right there. You can already see I have November done. I had done November a while back. So I think that'll be fun. I'm having fun with those. Okay, next, this was a new start. I can't be blamed, but Amanda, the Alba Stitcher can be blamed. <laughs> um, I had this in my stash. I had asked for this for, I think my birthday maybe last year, uh, and this is Pansy, <laughs> Woo! Pansy Patch Quilt and Stitchery, Hester's Special Delivery. Isn't that adorable? Look at the variegation in that floss. I just think it's stunning. So I wanted to start this. I was super excited. Um, I had put it in my drawer and said, okay, no, you know, don't start another thing just yet. And then Amanda posted she was working on it and I had to join. So we have a stitch along. Um, I will put the name of it right here across the screen. So if you happen to be stitching a bunny uh, of any kind, please add the hashtag and we can have a fun little handle that we can see all of the bunny stuff, get us in the spring mood. So I started this, uh, I'm stitching it on 36 count Mayflower by Fox and Rabbit, and it was a brand new start. And this is how far I got. I've got some bunny buns. <laughs> Look at that little cotton tail. Isn't that adorable? And the color in that, I mean, you can just see in the fur, all of the variegation. It's just so beautiful. Now I'm doubting myself. You know what? I think so. in the last video I, sh I showed this start. I did. So this is not a new start if you watched my last video. If, the, if you just watched this video, it's a new start. But I started in on the house. I got the roof of the house done. I love this motif, like how they put this Quaker motif in the middle of the bunny. And just the variegation, the colors. Oh, I'm enjoying this one so much. So I think I'll take this one back out and stitch on this one for the next couple of days. I've been in the mood to get back to it, but trying to stay to my schedule. So yeah, I'm pretty sure I showed you that one last time. Okay, next is the stocking that I mentioned. So I got this pattern off of eBay. This is Must Be Saint Nick. It's a Dimensions Gold Kit. I saw Amanda, the Lucky Chance Stitcher, finish this and I was drooling on my phone. So I ran off and had to search really hard to find it, but found it and I'm slowly, 
let me emphasize the word slowly working on this. I find it tough to stitch on dark fabric. And I'm an evening stitcher. I don't typically stitch in the morning or during the day. I stitch in the evening after work. So I have to have really good lighting and I have to have really good patience. <laughs> because, I mean, if you've stitched a dimension kit, you know, right? There's a lot of blends. There's a lot of two strands of this, four strands of that. You really have to pay attention, but my motto on this is slowly but surely, right? A little at a time and the, the giant project will be done. So here's where I got to this time. So from my last video, I, I had started off with the pajamas on the, the little boy, and then this is part of the quilt on their bed. And this time I did the roof on the dollhouse. So. You can see like this whole bottom is a blend of black and gray. This was one solid color, I believe. And then this was light gray and gray. So there was a lot of gray happening. <laughs> a lot of different grays, gray, gray, gray. But I definitely don't stitch on this one as fast as I stitch on the others just because I'm really paying attention. Um, and there's a lot of symbols, right? There's a lot of different, not confetti, but a lot of symbols that look very similar. As a matter of fact, in this chart, they have the same symbol, like a star, for example, but there's a green star and there's a blue star. So you have to pay attention to the symbol and the color of the symbol. I feel like they, there's a lot, of, a lot of symbols they could have chose, but they chose to use the same ones in different colors. So that's been a bit of a challenge. My next one is, and this is the whip. This is one of the 13 whips I chose to get done this year. This is Love Lives Here by Country Cottage Needleworks. Isn't that a sweet, adorable little pattern? I love the little red birdies. So I am also stitching this one on 36 count Mayflower by Fox and Rabbit. I love that color. It's just a very neutral, creamy white color. Oh, I did iron this, but not very well. So here is where I got to. So you can see I really started focusing on this border coming down here and up the corner. The border is, again, I can be out there watching TV with Matt and, you know, not have to be too super intense on, you know, reading the pattern because of the repetitive nature. Um, so I love it. I have some of this tree started and this little fence with the bird. So I think what I'm gonna do this time, I definitely wanna finish up here. And then I thought, just keep going with the border. So this vine with the hearts and the flowers goes all the way around. So I think I'm gonna focus on continuing to do that border all the way around. And hopefully by the next video, I'll have that done. We shall see. Okay, those were my whips. I want to share some previous fun Easter finishes. Not fully finished. I have one fully finished, but if you're looking for some cute little decorations for your home, I thought I'd share these and what they look like because I really want to get mine fully finished this year so I can display them. They're so adorable. So I really enjoyed this one. I can't remember what floss tuber I saw. Hmm. I can't remember which floss tuber I saw that had done this pattern. It might have been Nikki Noodle. It may have been you, Nikki. Um, and I ran off to get the free pattern. It's by Whilst Iris Naps, and it's carrots. And it's so adorable. I just stitched this on a 32 count white. And I love, I absolutely love this piece. I love how she did the carrot stems. It just adds like texture to the design. I love the different designs in the carrots themselves. And this one wasn't bad, like this worked up quickly. And I, I'm gonna turn it into a little Easter pillow and put it out in my spring display. So I really like that one. So if you're looking for a freebie, adorable, put it in your little basket, that's a big recommendation. The next one, um, let me show you the fully finished one first. This is from, Prairie Schooler just hatched book number 107 and has four designs. The first one I did was the bunnies in the field. So much fun. A lot of stitching in this one, though. I remember being like, wow, this is a lot of grass. <laughs> 
but so much fun. And the back of the pattern has the template for the egg. So you don't have to try and freehand an egg, uh, which makes the finishing a lot easier. And I hang this one out on my Easter tree. I just finished it with a little piece of like, twine. Yeah, it's so adorable. So there's three more of these patterns. Um, I finished two more of them, but I haven't fully finished them yet. So that's on my list to do. Um, this one is the little baby yellow chicks, which is absolutely adorable. I'm off on my fabric, but again, 32 count white. I love it how they're going different directions with the little lilies in between them. So sweet. Not a ton of time to finish. Not a lot of colors. You know, prairie schoolers don't have a lot of colors. So if you just want a sweet little springy finish, I can't believe Easter's next week. Yeah, I've been frantically <laughs> stuffing Easter eggs because I have seven nieces and a nephew. So I have six nieces and one nephew and I host an Easter egg hunt for them every year. So I've been doing a lot of Easter egg shopping. Um, but if you want to get a little Easter egg ornament on your tree, I think that's so sweet. And then lastly is again from the same booklet. This one is a farmer with his sheep. It's so cute. 32 count white. I just love the little black sheep at the top. He's not, he's not actually black. It's like a dark mocha thread, but isn't that adorable with the little blue coat of the farmer? Oh, those sheep are so sweet. I really need to finish these and get them up on my Easter tree. So those are a couple of spring Eastery finishes that I've had from the past that I thought I'd share. I love when people share their previous finishes because, you know, you just get an opportunity to see more stuff stitched up, <laughs> which is always good for me. Uh, okay, I want to do a shout out. Um, and then after the shout out, I want to do my crochet project, which will only take a minute or two. So if you're not interested in the crochet, uh, the happy card will be at the end. So the shout out I want to do is blushing pink stitches. Um, what, what a sweetheart she is. She has so much stitching done. She just posted a picture on her Instagram. I think it was on her Instagram. She finished, she finished the Modern Folk Embroidery 2021 Fruit of Plenty sale and has it up on her wall and it is stunning. Um, and now she's stitching it again for her mom. Like, I'm just so impressed. So go over and check her channel out. I'll put it here. Great floss tuber, really, really adorable and really proficient, quick stitcher, I'll say. <laughs> okay, let's talk about my crochet project. So I talked about it a little bit in my last video. Um, my niece, Abigail, is gonna turn two in October and I am stitching her a little rainbow blankie. And I found this pattern and I'll link it below. It is Joe to the World Creations. She is an incredible YouTuber. If you don't know how to crochet, if you, whatever level you're at and you're looking for a project, she is so thorough and slow and zoomed in on her projects. It's very easy to follow. And this was, um, I'll put the name of the pattern in the description box below. I can't remember what the actual name of the pattern is, but it's done in moss stitch, which is a very easy stitch. It's actually just a single crochet followed by a chain one, and then you're stitching into the gap spaces. And the idea is it gives you a more solid blanket and not so many holes for little fingers and toes to get stuck in. So I'm using this Bernay Softy Baby. I absolutely love it. I bought it in all of these super soft colors. And so I've taken Joe's pattern and I've just modified it to, to add the different colors. I modified the size a bit. Um, and so let me show you where I'm at. I started off with the purple. Aren't those colors so soft and sweet? So I started off with the purple and fold it in half here and then went to the blue and I'm now in that really beautiful green. I'm trying to do the Roy G. Biv, <laughs> trying to stay with the official, uh, you know, colors of the rainbow in the order that they go. But let me get closer so you can see this stitch, what I'm talking about. It's 
So see how it's like very woven in? There's not, even when I stretch it, there's not a ton of holes. And I just think it's so sweet. It's so warm. This yarn, this is just, you know, I bought it at Joanne Fabrics. It is not expensive yarn. I think it's all acrylic. And it is, yes, it's 100% acrylic. It is so soft. So I'm super excited. The plan is I've got, so I'm down here in the green. I've got a yellow and a pink. And then there's a border, a really adorable border, and I'm gonna do it in white, kind of like clouds around the rainbow blanket. So that's taken up some time. I really enjoy working on it. It's very repetitive, very soothing, I find. Okay, let's do the happy card. What number are we on, guys? 22, wow. I am transformed. I definitely am after my surgery. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I see the beauty of change. Everything I have been through transformed me into who I am today. I am so much braver. I am so much more caring. I am so much more emotionally intelligent. I am so much more open. I will continue changing and improving. I am transformed. What a beautiful card. Wow. That applies to everything, right? All the tough stuff you go through, there's always a silver lining even the hardest ones when it's, it's super hard to find them. I will say, you know, my father passed away when I was 21 and I'm the oldest sibling. So the youngest at the time was 12. And that event definitely transformed us. And I'm happy to say it transformed us in a good way. We're so close. All five of us are so close. And Sometimes, you know, when I'm reflecting back on that and it's so painful and, you know, of course, right, everyone's lost someone and I wish he was still here today. But I have to say that was the silver lining is how close we are now um, because of that. So any circumstance you've got, even colon polyp surgery, <laughs> you can see the silver lining and see the good in the change, I think, even when it's tough. So that's all I have today, guys. Um, I will be back in three weeks and I will do the giveaway for Hippity Hoppity. <laughs> I just can't believe how that charm matches this like almost exact. Um, so I'll do the giveaway for Hippity Hoppity and show you where I am on my whips and tell you how the Easter egg hunt went with all the kids. So until I see you guys next time, happy stitching, happy spring. Bye.